Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our new episode, Bedtime Stories. I'm your host, Jamila, and today, hopefully, if we have time, we can squeeze in two stories. Now, it's always good to read, even if it's just 10 minutes before bed. So get snuggly and get ready for your stories. The books I've chosen today are The Story of Prophet Muhammad, Peace Be Upon Him, which is this one, and also I've got the book, The Story of Ibrahim, also known as Abraham, peace be upon him, which is this one. So I thought I will choose this one. Yeah, let's read this one then. The Prophet, peace be upon him. And as we know, Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger sent down by Allah to guide us and to teach us about our religion. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca from Ismail's Arab clan. He was just an orphan at eight years old. His uncle, Abu Talib, raised him till he was a strong man. <clears throat> he grew up as a shepherd and became a trader selling far and wide. One day, he met a beautiful lady. She was rich and wealthy. Her name was Khadija. She asked him to marry her because she heard the reputation of the prophet he was a caring, honest man. Even before prophethood, which means before he became a prophet, he was called the trusted. The trusted means Al-Amin in Arabic. The non-believers even took his advice. They knew of his good character and he was a lovely, clean man. The non-believers at Mecca also cared for the pilgrims but they did shirk in the heart. The Kaaba housed hundreds of idols like statues named Uzza and Lat. The non-believers, they didn't like the baby girls. They wanted to get rid of them. They were horrible and bad people. They even mistreated the slaves. Prophet Muhammad, he did not like this behavior. He hated evil people. He wanted everyone to be nice and kind to each other. So one day, Prophet Muhammad went away, peace be upon him, into a cave so he could think and pray. He was aged 40 when he was sitting in a special cave called Cage Cave Hera. Suddenly, he saw this shining light shining at him. He looked up and wondered, what is this light? It was Angel, Angel Jibril. He had come down to visit the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Cave Hera. He looked at the Prophet and said, Read, read. The Prophet was in great shock. He didn't know what to say. The Angel Jibril said to him, Read. Then the Prophet replied, But I don't know how to read. The angel said, read, read in the name of your Lord. And Prophet Muhammad repeated after the angel and started reciting the Quran. Prophet Muhammad was in great shock. He had just met angel Jibril. He ran home as fast as he could and he said to his wife, Khadija, cover me. I'm shaking. Khadija said, what's happened? What's wrong? But he did not answer. The Prophet was very scared. He had just met Angel Jibril. His wife said to him, Don't worry, Allah will help you because you are truthful, you are pious and you care for everyone. He was the last Prophet sent down by Allah to guide people and help people worldwide spread the message of Islam. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, called people to do good deeds, be nice to each other, and to give charity. He warned people not to do evil, not to do bad things, and never have pride. The non-believers said, they don't believe that they should turn their gods into one god. They said it was insane. The Prophet Muhammad did not like their offers as they offered him lots of gold and lots of money to convince him that the non-believers' gods 
were the real religion. But Prophet Muhammad was strong and his faith was strong and he knew Islam was the right religion. When the non-believers threw lots of bad things on people and were rude to people, they even beat people up just for being Muslim. So Prophet Muhammad sent them to Ethiopia, hundreds of Muslims he sent them to Ethiopia and even the king became Muslim too. After 10 years of preaching and teaching people about Islam, unfortunately his uncle passed away. He wasn't very well and he died. Then soon after, his beloved wife Khadija, radiallahu anha, she passed away too. This was a very sad time for the Prophet as, as he lost two people he loved the most. The non-believers were still being rude and horrible. But Prophet Muhammad said, this is the test and this is my test in life. All in one day, Angel Jibril came back and took Prophet Muhammad to Jerusalem. He then took him to Jannah's furthest tree. How amazing is that? He went to visit the furthest tree in Jannah, in heaven. Prophet Muhammad met other prophets too. And Allah revealed to him, showed him how the five daily prayers are prayed. The non-believers asked the Prophet, If your religion is true, show us a miracle, then we'll believe you. So the Prophet Muhammad showed them a miracle. He split the moon in half, one on the left and one on the right. The moon was two now. They still did not believe. They turned away even after seeing this miracle. Seeing Prophet Muhammad split the moon in half, they still turned away. As the pilgrims learned all about Islam, the non-believers became more cruel. They were more mean. The Prophet would soon to be leaving Mecca and travelling to a place called Medina. He made Hijra. Hijra means travelling. Far away to a city called Medina. Lots of Muslims left for Medina as the non-Muslims became even more harsh and more cruel. They did not want to stay there anymore. They tried to plan and plot against the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his follower Abu Bakr escaped. While the non-believers were plotting something, they found Ali in his place another follower of Prophet Muhammad. Ali was in his place instead of the Prophet. Peace be upon him. Medina welcomed all the Muslims. Like family, they were equally taken in. Everybody was welcomed in the city of Medina. A mosque was built for them to pray in. And all the non-Muslims were very angry. They were not happy at all. The jealous non-Muslims joined and joined the Muslims and the Jews trying to destroy the Muslim religion called Islam. They were pretending to be Muslims but they weren't. 300 Muslims defeated them in a big fight but they were helped by Allah and his angels. After lots of fighting Allah gave Muslims victory, which means they won, the Muslims won. Saving them from bad things and bad people. The Prophet, peace be upon him, sent letters to important rulers and important people like Caesar, inviting them to Islam and giving them lots of dawah and telling them which was the right way. The people of Mecca broke their deal with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So they went back. They went back to Mecca. They destroyed all the idols in the Kaaba and Islam won the peace. 
Finally, the Hajj day came. When everyone did Hajj, Hajj means when they go to the Kaaba and they do the Islamic tradition, which is called Hajj. Many at the day of Arafah advising the Muslims how to be. He had spread Allah's word, which is Dawah, spreading the message of Islam. Muslims cried, as sadly, our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, after years and years of hard work and dawah, passed away at the age of 63. Now, I always find this book very interesting. It's sad that our Prophet had to pass away at the age of 63. But what did we learn from the story, kids? What did we learn? What's the moral of the story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Well, I think the moral of the story is be strong, be patient. You will have lots of tests in your life and you will have lots of struggles. But be strong, be kind and be good to one another as this is what Islam teaches us. Now, I think we can squeeze in one more story. The story of Prophet Ibrahim, also known as Abraham. <coughs> so, Abraham, peace be upon him, grew up in a land full of idols, worshipped and called Babylon. There were pagans, which are also known as non-believers, bowed to false gods. They weren't real gods. They were things like items and idols, stars, the sun. As a boy, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, saw his father, Azar, craving idols out of wood. His father used to make idols. I'll just put that book there. Bowing to useless statues, even trying to feed them if he could. <clears throat> he told his father, Dad, stop. As idols can't hear you, his dad, Azhar, told him, don't disobey or I will throw you out of the room. His dad, Azhar, shouted, worship your father's gods. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, didn't say what his dad wanted him to say. Saying he would pray for his father, he said, peace, peace be with you and went away. <clears throat> Ibrahim, peace be upon him, went, wanted the truth and didn't worship the stars or the moon. He didn't think it made any sense. How could you worship the moon? How could you worship the stars? They've all been created. He wanted to know who is the real creator and worship the only true one. Once the pagans went to a festival, but Ibrahim, peace be upon him, faked feeling sickly. So he was pretending he wasn't well because he didn't want to attend the festival. He smashed all the idols, but fixed an axe on one and left very quickly. The angry non-believers came back and saw all their gods were destroyed. Wanting to know who did this, Clever Abraham, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, said, We don't know. We don't know who did this. Why don't you ask your idols, as you think they can speak? Maybe they can tell you. They said, Idols can't speak. He said, But you bow to them. Idols can't help or hear you. So worship Allah and goodness will come for you. They cried, help, help. Light and big fire tossed. But Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was unhurt as Allah made fire cool and safe for him. The non-believers planned to do something bad to Prophet Abraham, but they lost against him as Allah made a plan to save the Prophet. Abraham was a friend of Allah, a Muslim and a very pious man. 
That's why Allah liked him. Abraham asked Allah how Allah raised the dead. Oh Allah, how do you raise the dead? He was told to raise four birds and to spread them far and wide. They flew back alive, raised by Allah's words. King, the king boasted he gave life, life and death, but the prophet, he did not believe him. He said, Allah raises the sun from the east. Can you raise it from the west? So the prophet was challenging the king to ask him, can you raise it from the west? Only Allah can raise the sun. A prophet Abraham traveled with his wife, Sarah. We also call her Sarah and his nephew looked to Palestine, then took his co-wife Hajar and her baby to Mecca after some time. Hajar ran in a panic from Safa to Marwa. Thirsty baby Ismail was very thirsty and suddenly water came gushing out from the floor. It was a miracle. An angel pointed out, look, Look there, the water was called Zamzam. It was special water that started to gush out from the ground as she ran from side to side for water for her baby. Prophet Abraham often visited Hajar and his son in the dry area of Bekka. He built the Kaaba with Ismail, Allah's house for Hajj in Mecca. Allah blessed the area and the world's first masjid with peace. Even Angel Jibril thought it was special and got a special stone to fit as a corner piece. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, told young Ismail that he dreamt something very bad would happen to him. Ismail said to his dad, please be patient. Allah knows what is best for us. With a blade on his son, just for a test, Allah was testing the Prophet to see how much he listened. And that was the story of Prophet Ibrahim. What do you think the moral is of this story? I think the moral of this story is trust and patience. And believing in what you believe in. Don't believe in what others tell you to. Find the truth yourself. And be strong and patient. And Allah will always help you and guide you. So my children, I hope you enjoyed the story today. The story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the story of Prophet Abraham. Inshallah, I hope to see you again soon. Have a good night. And I'll see you again soon. Assalamu alaikum. Bye.